All right, today I have a walk-in cooler, Beacon 2 system, that is down. All right, so that gauge there is showing 50 Fahrenheit. Let's go in and check out our evaporator coil here. So we do have a call for cooling on our Beacon 2 showing 71 Fahrenheit, A1 error code. So let's go see what's going on. Visual check, sight glass is low. Um, as you can see in the background there, the left condenser fan is not running, the right one is running. Okay, so maybe we have a problem with the pressure switch. So let's check our pressures here. And if we have low head pressure, which we do have, 128 PSI. Alright, so let's go figure out what our pressure should be and how we determine that we have a low charge outside of the obvious signs of the one condenser fan not running and the low sight glass so let's go suction pressure so uh, we have an EEV so it's probably set somewhere between six seven eight nine somewhere there let's call it ten just to make things easy so whether you have an EEV or TXV uh, the calculations are more or less going to be the same we're just trying to get in the ballpark uh, we're not looking for precision at the moment we will be later on so we're going to go box temp current box temp minus our evap td so in this case we said we had 71 fahrenheit let's subtract our 10 td superheat and that should give us 61 fahrenheit so let's go pull up our pt chart really quickly let's go look at 61 fahrenheit is right here and that gives us 128 suction which i know seems super high and you'll never actually get that high because the EV is going to throttle, but that, that's not important right now. So we're looking for 128 PSI. And then more importantly, we want to figure out our head pressure. Okay, so that's going to be ambient plus 30 Fahrenheit. That's our condenser split. Okay, so in this case, we got 75 Fahrenheit. We're going to add our 30 Fahrenheit. Okay, and that's going to give us... 105 Fahrenheit so let's go pull that up on our PT really quickly so 105 Fahrenheit is right here and we're looking for 252.1 PSI so 252 PSI so as you can tell our suction pressure is low and our head pressure is low so that's telling us we are low on charge um, so that's telling me we're definitely low on charge and a dead giveaway there was sight glass is low and the second condenser fan's not running. So as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and do a leak test. I have 18 PSI for suction pressure. I want to bump that up. Okay, so a very easy way to do this is we're going to leave our evaporator coil powered up, which is going to make sure our EVs open. And then we're going to go kill power to our condensing unit. Uh, if I can find this breaker here, that is. And the system's going to attempt to equalize. So now when the system attempts to equalize, we're going to get our section pressure bumped up. And we can avoid having to recover and put in nitrogen at the moment. Okay, we may not find our leak. All right, find the breaker. Beauty. Let's go see what happens to our suction pressure. So EV should be open right now. Compressor's not pumping, so it should be equalizing. And we're going to receive going up to 37.7. It's going to slowly start ramping up higher than that. All right, so let's go ahead and start our leak test here. So we always start at our usual suspects. Let's start with the evaporator coil. Let's start with all the Schraders, and then let's go to the U-Bends. And we're gonna work our way down and see if we can get this baby to beep on us. See if we can find a leak. If not, we're gonna have to crank up the pressure. Or no luck on the U bends. Okay, there, no luck there either. 
fit your R distributor here. Rearrange this ladder, so we kind of got a hit in this area, which is good, makes our life easy. And yeah, we're definitely getting a hit on the distributor. So the next thing we want to do is try to pinpoint this bad boy. As you can see here, the leak is somewhere between 6 and 12 o'clock, which is good. Um, but I want to make my life easy when I spray these bubbles. So let's turn the sensitivity right down. And let's see if this will pick it up. It's showing me not really 6 o'clock, there's nothing. As soon as I go to 9 o'clock. 9, 10, 11 o'clock, we're getting some hits. I'm still getting hits around 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Nothing at 5 or 4 o'clock, so let's literally go pinpoint this. So let's change the mode here. Uh, love this mode here, and we're going to find the exact location of the leak here. So we short nothing at 6, and then if we go to 9, 10 o'clock, look at that. Big old leak. We just pinpointed between 9 and 12 o'clock somewhere there. So this makes our life super easy. This pinpoint mode is really good. Get her really quickly here. So we're going to find probably the exact location. And yeah, there we go. That's the exact location will be probably 10 o'clock. So let's go spray some bubbles. We know exactly where to spray it. on there good so we're assuming our leaks between somewhere between nine and ten o'clock and look at that bubble look at that that's probably ten ten o'clock look at that huge bubble so good job here by DTEC once again DTEC 3 came through got a huge bubble found the leak in under ten minutes Yeah, look at that bubble. Perfect. So see, we only have to spray the bubbles in one area. So we're just going to do a general look over at this boil, and this thing is not going to be worth repairing. I'm going to try to braze that. I'm going to make another hole and heat up. So I'm going to recommend that they get a whole new boil here at this point in time. And we're just going to do a quick inspection upstairs on the condenser and make sure there's no oil or anything like that and we're good here so we got our leak so let's go ahead and get this coil changed out all right so we'll start out let's mark all our wires and take our pictures uh, there's quite a few wires on this one because there is a remote controller upstairs all right, so we're going to cut out our trap here. Do not try to unsweat a trap. It's obviously going to have oil in it, okay? Uh, and literally, you're going to smoke the place out, and you're not going to be able to breathe. All right, so we got our wire out, cut out our trap. We're going to cut out our liquid line. And we're looking good here. All right, we're going to pull out our incoming uh power for our coil uh, you can't really see that but the camera's not really pointing there but pulled all that wiring out and let's cut our drain out all right so as you can see wiring's been pulled out traps been cut liquid line cut uh drain cut and here's our incoming power wires so we are ready to drop this coil down let's go so i'm just gonna put this uh build like a mini stand here and we're gonna drop this coil down uh, i do have someone coming to help me to put the new coil up uh, i just requested that i get a helper for like literally 30 minutes so i'm gonna drop it all down so that when my helper shows up we can just toss the new one up 
And look at that. Just like that. Coil is down. Ready to come off. And as you can see here, we're clear from all the studs. We're good to go. All right, so I put the new coil up. I did not record that part just because I had someone else in the video. So we're going to go ahead and do our nitrogen test. Uh, let's make sure all our brazing was done correctly. Now this coil did come uh, pre-charged with nitrogen. There was little to no nitrogen in this unit, which makes me super nervous. I've installed probably five or six of these. I've had one before where it was leaking at the distributor and they had to ship a whole new unit. So I'm going to be thorough here. I'm going to check all the usual suspects and we're going to do obviously our standing nitrogen test probably for 30 or 45 minutes. Uh, I cannot afford to get called back on this unit. It's obviously a critical unit to their business. Only walk-in cooler in the building. So we have passed our test. Now we're going to go do our evacuation, run our vacuum. Now this EEV comes uh, in the open position when it is in the off position. So you do not have to power it up. There are some units that you have to send power to the EEV. And another thing here is this transformer was set to 240 volts. I need 208, so make sure you're paying attention to that. All right, we are all wired up. And we're going to get ready to go. Charged up. Right condenser fan. Left condenser fan running. Look at that. Sight glass is full. We are good to go. Well, apparently we're not good to go. Um, box temper's at 42, and because I was charging upstairs, I wasn't super paying attention, of course, and look at our saturation, 14, that's way too low, and two fans aren't running, that's why we have low suction. So let's get that rectified. Alright, so yeah, there is a plug that came loose, sometimes it happens in shipping, so we got 38 box temperature, and you can scroll through on this new Intelligen controller, which I've never seen these before. Uh, this is new we have used to that bq2 one and we have a 23 fahrenheit super so, uh my kids are up right now usually i record these things at like six in the morning but uh, i couldn't this weekend we had some stuff to do so i'm uh got booted to the garage here so we'll just do the uh the end recap of the video from here all right as you can see another service call another leaker shocker um as you're seeing a lot of the same themes occurring over and over so with these EVs, when you have a new box, uh, you have to wait for it to cycle three, four times for that superheat to get set correctly. I think on the third cycle, I got down to like seven or eight superheat. Um, I did not take a video of that, as you can see. Messed that part up, but it's all good. So yeah, don't be concerned if you're getting that in the mid-20s there for your superheat on the first couple um, cycles. It'll eventually come down and you'll get your target superheat. Now that is adjustable. Uh, the Beacon 2 and Intelligen, they're about the same features on them, to be honest. Uh, you're showing the superheat, the saturation temperatures, there's Transducer, just doing all the calculations for you. So they're pretty similar. Um, as you can see, I had one of the fans, or two of the Vapor fans weren't working. There was some programming involved in that controller. I couldn't get it going. I did have to reach out to tech support, and they had to walk me through that part of it. Um... I did not record that part just because um, I was just on the phone. I just didn't want to record it and then have to hold the camera. So uh, there was some programming, but more or less they're about the same thing that I'm seeing. According to Heatcraft, they're not using that Beacon 2 anymore. So it's possible it doesn't exist. Uh, we do see a lot of these Beacon 2 systems on the, uh, on the sites where contractors can build their own box because it comes basically the condenser and evapor coil are attached together so anyone can install it. So that's why these Beacon 2s got really popular. Uh, I really wanted to put a keep right in here. Um, it's really difficult for us to get these parts up here, up near Toronto. There's one supplier. Uh, they don't stock many parts because they're not super uh, popular in this area. 